What's up guys, it's Alex with Alex Red Fishing and Lucky Tackle Box and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the bass attacker lizards that you guys are going to be receiving in this month's Lucky Tackle Box. So let's get right into this video with rigging, retrieval, and location. Alright guys, let's get right into this video with rigging. So I'm actually going to rig this lizard up on a shaky head. A 3 8 ounce shaky head to be more specific. The reason I do that is this lizard is actually very buoyant in the water. So what that means is like if you were to drop this lizard in the, the water, it'll actually float on top. So what this shaky head is going to do is it's going to put that lizard's nose straight down in the bottom and then this tail and all these legs are going to float up off the bottom so that that shaky head is going to give you a really good presentation for those bass to get a good look at another reason i'm going to pick this 3 8 ounce shaky head is because you can fish it anywhere from shallow water to even deeper water that 3 8 ounce size won't get you hung up in the shallow water but will help you get down and touch those little bit deeper fish then i'm going to pair that up with 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon or coal polymer with a seven to seven and a half foot medium heavy rod with a seven one gear ratio reel. Uh, the reason you want the seven one gear ratio reel is that way if you have a bass that eats it on a long cast, you can catch up with them, hit them, and get that bass into the boat or into the bank. All right guys, so retrieval on this bait is actually pretty simple. You're gonna retrieve this bait like you would retrieve any other soft plastic, a Texas rig, a Carolina rig, a jig, anything like that. All you're gonna do is you're gonna throw that bait out there, and you're gonna watch your line. One way to know that your baits hit the bottom is there'll be a bow in your line. And once that bow relaxes and that line lays down in the water, that means that your bait's on the bottom. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick your rod tip up and then you're gonna let that bait fall back down, reel up the slack that's in your line, make sure that that bow relaxes and then pick it up again. And you're just gonna repeat this process all the way back to the boat or till you stop filling the bottom. Um, you know, a lot of the times, places that you're going to fish this shaky head, you could be fishing it in a pocket like this, up next to a tree, or something like that. So if you hit a drop-off, those fish may be sitting on that drop-off, you may get a bite there. Or you may just fish it off that drop-off and just need to go ahead, reel that bait up, and make another cast out there. And repeat the same process of just making sure that line relaxes down on the water, that you have bottom contact, and that you're just making those really slow raises with your rod tip and working the bottom really good and really paying attention to what you're feeling down there because you could run into a brush pile or a rock pile and once you hit that rock pile that could be where those fish are sitting and a bait like this is great for knowing what's down there because you'll be able to feel those bottom composition changes and be able to know where those bites are going to come come from so like i said retrieval on this bait really simple but also a great and effective way to know what you're fishing and to get a lot of big bites all right guys so let's talk about location for this bait so this month's box is special because all the baits in this month's box are designed to catch the bigger than average fish or that bass of a lifetime so in this video it's going to be a little bit different because i'm going to give you guys a couple of locations that you can fish a bait like this lizard on a shaky head so number one is like where i'm at now so out here i've got some submerged trees, I've got submerged brush piles. I'm in the back of a creek. So there's actually a creek that flows in the back here. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna drop this water temperature in the summertime. It's hot right now. You know, air temperatures in the 90s, water temperatures in the 90s on the main lake. But back here where this creek dumps in, that water temperature can be four to five degrees cooler. Plus it's bringing in a lot more oxygen. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna attract all the bass, the bait fish, everything that the bass wants into these pockets. And back here in the, in the backs of these pockets, in the backs of these creeks, like I said, we have these things like these submerged brush piles. So one of my favorite things to do is just to cast to these submerged brush piles, you know, like in between them, close to the front of them, around them because just the brush you see on top isn't all the brush that's down there. There's brush that, that runs out just right here, a bass just come up and ate out of one of these brush piles as I was standing here talking to you. I don't know if you guys can see the ring on the water right there, but that was a bass just coming up and ate. And what these bass do is they get back here, they get tight to these brush piles, and they cruise around these brush piles, and they eat all the bluegill, everything that lives in these brush piles that live back here in this cooler water because this creek's dumping in. So, you know, if you guys are looking for that place you're thinking you know the water's extremely hot i don't know where to go go look for a little bit cooler water use your a map use something like that to go find where maybe a creek dumps in or um, a spring flows in that way that you're getting that little bit cooler water 
and it's bringing a little more oxygen into the water as well. And then you wanna look for targets for the bass to orient to, like these brush piles, these trees back here, um, or even like I said in retrieval, you guys can use this thing to fill bottom composition. So you could just fan cast this area until you felt a brush pile. And you could throw at that brush pile two or three times and there might be a fish sitting in there that bigger than average fish that might not bite on the first uh, time through the brush pile, but will bite on the second or the third. So let's head, head out on the main lake. We're gonna go find some deep stuff and we're gonna talk about our second location that you can fish a bait like this. All right guys, so let's talk about our second location. Our second location is gonna be deep water. Like I said, during these summer months, these hot months, you're gonna to wanna to look for that cooler, oxygenated water. And if you can't find a place where creeks dump in, deeper water is where you're gonna find that. So, I'm sitting here on this point, we're in about 23 foot of water. This point tapers out very slowly. Um, you know, you'll throw up into probably 10, and it'll just very slowly go from 10 down to about 20, 25 feet. And those bass can be sitting really anywhere in between there. And if you guys don't have, you know, big graphs that you can go graph and see the fish and all that, that's where that shaky head, like I said, filling that bottom composition comes into play. So what you can do is you can actually throw out there and you can just make a good long cast all the way up on that point. Let that lizard sink to the bottom and then you just slowly start dragging it back. And what that's gonna do is not only are you covering a lot of water in one cast, but you're also able to feel those bottom composition changes. So as I'm making my way down this point, it's just a slate rocky point. So, you know, there's a thousand places the bass could be, but there could be, you know, a rock pile or a tree that someone's put out or something like that down there that I run into. And when I run into it, I'll know I've ran into it. I can fish it more effectively and more slowly and maybe get a bite. But the whole point in coming out here to this deeper water is that deep water holds more oxygen. So bass that maybe live in this pocket where there's no creek that flows in, aren't going to orient to the back of that pocket where there's no oxygen, there's no creek flowing in. They're going to come out here to these main lake points, these deep points, and they're going to live here because that's where the oxygen's at and that's where the bait goes. And really a bass is going to follow the oxygen and it's going to follow the food. And so coming out to deep water is where they can be comfortable, they can live, and they can eat. So when it comes to finding this deep water stuff, you know, if you don't have a graph, one of the best things you can get is a topographic map of the lake. Um, there are people who have already mapped out the whole lake. They've done all the work for you. You don't have to have a big graph. You don't have to have a big fancy boat. You literally just need a map, a topographic map of the lake. You can go in there. You can find where points run out into the water. You can go fish those points. You can line up on those points using just a good old fashioned paper map. Or you can use apps on your phone like the Navionics app. There's actually an app by the people who make the lake mapping for these big graphs that you guys can use. You can download the app and you can look at the maps and it'll pull up a real time view of where you're at on the lake. So you can use it just like you would use the graph on a boat. You can line your boat up on places like these long tapering points or an underwater hump or somewhere that those bass are gonna be and hang out in that deep cool water and you can fish it without needing all the newest and best technology. All you need is your smartphone that you're probably watching this video on right now. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, comments, go down there, leave them in the comment section. I'll be down there answering any questions you guys have. Make sure to go to subscribe to my channel. It's Alex Red Fishing. There'll be a link down in the description. But as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.